Hello, God bless you. I hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. I want to bring out a beautiful scripture about the love of God found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, which says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verses 1 through 3 focus on God's love and how his love results in the believer becoming children of God. Becoming a child of God is seen as a great sign of love from God the Father. John specifically mentions that believers are not only called children of God, believers truly are children of God. This theme closely connects with the words from John 1.12. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The idea that God would love us enough to make us his children is just one of the amazing aspects of the gospel. John then, then notes why they don't know Jesus. As used by John, the concept of knowing involves more than just information. It refers to a sense of intimacy, fellowship, connection. The unbelieving world does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, so they have no relationship with his children. God's children are becoming increasingly like God the Father. Regardless of whether they recognize us, God loves us and makes us his children. John tells us how great God's, the Father's love for us is. Those who believe are his children. So he is the Father of all Christians. They are born again of God. God the Father loves each one of us with a great love. He loves us so much. More than any other love. We know this love because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. We can be God's children because of this love. John is astonished at this love of God. It is a love that is strange to us. It is so much better than any other love. John wonders at such a love. It makes us children of God. See how great this love is. God the Father has given this love to us. See how great the, the gift of this love really is. It is so great that God calls us his children. By his love he made us his children. We had nothing to do with this birth. It comes from God's love for us. All who are real Christians have been born again. They have become a part of God's family. They are the children of God now. They are his children not just by name. They are also his children in fact. The people of the world do not know God. They, do not, they didn't recognize Jesus when he was on the earth. Because the people of the world did not know God. And they cannot know his children. The world doesn't understand that Christians are God's children. Christians do not really belong to this world. They are strangers whose home is elsewhere. I love where it says, Behold, what manner of love. He's saying, See, take note, consider, look by faith with wonder and astonishment and observe how great a favor. What an instance of matchless love. What a wonderful blessing of grace. God the Father has bestowed upon us God the Father of Jesus, the Father of us in Christ, who adopted us into his family and regenerated us by his grace and hath freely given us a new name that we should be called the sons of God. This blessing comes not by nature nor by merit, but by grace, the grace of adoption, which is a person unto an inheritance they have no legal right the spring of it 
is an everlasting and unchanging love of God. It is a privilege that exceedeth all others, and is attended with many. So it is no wonder John breaks out in this manner, and calls upon the saints to view it with admiration and thankfulness. You see this love that God has for us is so beautiful. We can't even understand it. We can't even put it into words. The best way to describe it is that it's a love where even though you mess up, God still loves you. And, and parents have that with their children. But you know, sometimes a child can go so far where they are disappointed. Sometimes where they're heartbroken by what their child does. But God's love is even deeper. That it doesn't matter what we do. He still loves us. And sadly, the people who do reject him, he will send to hell. And I can't imagine what he goes through doing that. Because it is his child still. And he still gives him every opportunity. And trust me, I mean, the Lord's gave me so many opportunities I can't even count them. And there's still people that still reject that call. In closing, I want to share the gospel because as we talked about, you know, there's a difference between intellectually knowing Jesus and having that relationship that these unbelievers don't understand. You may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may understand what Jesus did on the cross, but you don't know him personally. You don't know this love that we're talking about, this beautiful love. You don't have a personal relationship with him. You never take the time to talk to him, to pray to him, to read your Bible or pray. That's why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. Sin creates a wall that separates us from God. This is confirmed in Romans 3.23, which says all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Meaning that because of our sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. But as we see in John 3.16, God loves you so much that God the Son left heaven. Jesus left heaven, became a flesh and blood human. And 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. But Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins. Meaning that when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put on our sins. So that when we believe the gospel message, we put on his righteousness, then we're saved. And now when God looks at us, he doesn't see someone who falls short. He doesn't see our sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to scriptures. Romans 10, 9. If you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. And as we see at the end of John 3, 16, whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. But Jesus makes it clear in John 14, 6 that he is the only way to heaven. Jesus' blood is the ticket. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down that wall that separated us from God. And 1 John 1 9 says, If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, I mean, you're not saying words to please someone or try to get, a, get out of hell free car, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it. Because we can't earn our way to heaven, we can't be a good enough person, we can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity, or that you never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. This is made clear in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which says it's by grace that we're saved through faith, not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Meaning we can't earn it, we don't deserve it. But God loves us enough that he made a way. And that's what this verse right here is talking about. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. But yet, God still loves us. And how can you love someone who fails you daily? God does. And we always follow the gospel, the warning of Jesus is in return. Because right now, you can personally know Jesus. But one day soon and how soon, we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts it, and the shadow of the tribulation is so big, we can 
rarely see light around it. It'll be seven years of terrifying supernatural events, scarier than any movie you've ever seen or nightmare you've ever had. Each day will get progressively worse. It'll be literal hell on earth. Some signs to look for the tribulation are. Some will rise to power with all the answers. Simply put, this is a dictator empowered by Satan. And he will rule the whole world and set up a one world government, one world currency, and one world religion. In this system, you cannot buy, sell, or eat unless you're part of that system. He will confirm a seven-year peace deal that will allow Israel to build the third temple. And when Israel start, gets the ashes of the red heifer, which purifies them to sacrifice, to offer sacrifices, excuse me, then they'll start the daily sacrifices. And we know that the Antichrist will stop the daily sacrifices at the midway point of the tribulation. So until we see Israel offering daily sacrifices, and right now, we can still buy and sell and eat whatever we want. We're not in the tribulation yet. But it is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page, and I want you to know Jesus personally. Before all hell breaks loose, because right now, before the tribulation starts, we're under the age of grace. Meaning that right now is the easy way out to come to Jesus. All we have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for us on the cross. Surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. The restraint will be removed. And that will be the hard way. And you have to do more than just believe in Jesus at that point. You have to die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. We believe that one day millions will disappear along with all the children all over the world. And when you hear that all these have vanished, know that no matter what may be said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain away what happened. But no, if you don't see me or hear my voice and these videos are not uploaded, if all the children around the world are gone along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. You know, many had differing opinions on the rapture when I hear to argue about the timing or the reality of the rapture. These theologies really don't matter. One thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. The end is here. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today. While you still have the time, don't wait till you get, a point in time for, get to a point in time in your life where you feel ready. Or until your finances are secure, or whatever other excuse you tell yourself. Don't put Jesus off. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. There's no guarantee that we'll live to see the sunrise. Today is the day of salvation. In the description box, we have a link to the ABCs of salvation and the sample prayer. These are just a template, an outline of words you can say. The words are not important. It just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart. I pray you got some out of this. But don't take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourself. No one on this earth has all the answers. Only God does. And you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone read or preach. You're not going to get the full picture of someone preaching for a few minutes. They can't even scratch the surface of what's in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle that you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible if you don't have a physical book. And if you don't believe in Jesus today, tell him that you don't believe in him. Ask Jesus to prove himself to you today. But be open to accept his answer. And if you need prayer or have a praise report, let us know in the comments section. Send us an email. Send us a message on Discord on one of our topics. We love to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. We love to rejoice with you for what Jesus has done in your life. We pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you and Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow or in the clouds.